foreseen by a seer. He described the exact date he's going to come here. And so one that had the vision said, well, these people are going to come and a lot of our people are going to die. They're not even going to touch you with a, with a weapon. Just their presence is going to kill us. There was about 8,000 people here, and when our people met it the first time with the explorers, first contact. We had other communities on either the, the east side of us, the west side of us, and they heard about it, and they came up here to observe because it was part of history. The more people that came, the more exposed they got to the Europeans, first explorers. Not long after they left, the people started dying of, just dying. People working in the whales, and next thing you know, they drop, you know? People go to sleep and they never wake up. People were dying, they were being buried. Next day, there's more people dead. And pretty soon, they couldn't keep up with the dead, even when they multi-buried them. Side by side and putting logs over, they just died. And finally, they got really tired and they said, we're losing the battle with death here. We came to their senses and they said, okay, let's go talk to the elders. The elders are the ones that's going to give you counsel as to what to do. What could we do? Sorry. Anyway, the elders told them, anybody here that's not sick, Anybody here does not have a touch of anything that's, you know, uh, sen uh, uh, symptoms of uh, going to be the next in line to die? Pack up whatever you could to survival and walk away. And so don't even go back and speak to the loved ones you're leaving behind. Don't. You might want to stay. You might want to be, I got to look after them and they're going to end up dying. And the elder says, once you walk away, don't come back to even say goodbye. You could imagine leaving your husband, your wife, your kids, your dad, your nana, all the leaders that are, have just all this knowledge, just, they're dying, and you're leaving them behind.
And our people say the human death, the smell, far worse than any animal that they've ever experienced in their life. And the, and the story goes, you might be 18, 20 miles away and the wind blows from this direction and goes downwind, you could smell the death. So that was our first experience with an epidemic, uh, smallpox wiping out three quarters of our population. Then after that, there was uh, more deaths. By the time it's all over uh, with deaths for our people, there's going to only be a remnant of any value left. They waited until the elements, the silla, the sky, everything around you, cleaned it up. Then they started coming back. And that's when the uh, traders started coming in, and the white man started coming in. And then you had the white travelers, then you had the missionaries, then you had the whalers, you had the RCMP, so you're getting exposed to all this thing. And they had another disease called influenza, and that influenza killed more people. They had to leave this place again. And from 1900 to 1920, when a census was made about inevitable population, missionaries counted 720. The uh, traders in the register books, the people they deal with, they got the books together and they said 520. The population kept dropping. Some families, the elders counseled them, okay, have as many children as you can. Some of them had 12, 15, 16, 18. My mom had 21 children. And this is the time that the inner circle was formed, in evaluate inner circle of elders. The inner circle used every effort to have the uh, remnant survive to what we got today. Our people went through a lot of hard times and they passed for them. Just like a storm, you know, a storm hits. Sometimes the storms last for a long time and it affects people. But after the storm, there's always the digging out and starting over again. Through all that, the culture and Inivelo traditional knowledge has been passed on. And now we have 7,500 Inivelo, both here and down south where people have made it their home. Hang on. One, two, three. Oh, well, don't worry. I got a Hey, everybody. Take care of yourself. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Make sure you make it back. Yeah. Jerry, nice to meet you. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Get back with my burger. <laughs> <laughs> So we're not strangers to these kind of effects with uh, the COVID-19 that we're hearing about. This is just another one that's uh, uh, affecting the world. When the gills are red, they're good. Ma, ma, the But so long as our people listen to the elders, listen to the professional people, how they feel they could handle it, but always the isolation is the best uh, until it passes.
We don't know if it's going to get worse yet, but I think it's really important to learn from your past. Don't make the same mistake of not listening to your elders. The elders' words were what, why we have some of our people alive today. You know, we're not over it yet. And so long as uh, the people in the South act the way they do, and some of it denying it, and still there's a lot of people getting affected. Like, we still don't know what is going to happen. If it really reaches here, you're going to see a, an adaptation that even we won't listen to the couple now, we'll do it ourselves. You're going to see an evaluate, go up another notch. You're going to see our people. I mean, the elders' responsibility is, is uh, you know, we'll protect you. We'll teach you how. Hey, hey, hey.